Hey guys, this week on our lessons, we're going to be talking about listening to God. I know listening is something hard for us all. Uh, even myself, I have trouble listening sometimes. Um, but as Christ followers, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we've got to learn how to listen to God. We have to learn how to discern when God is speaking to us. We have to learn how to discern if God is speaking to us or if it's just one of our own ideas that we want to happen versus what God really wants to happen. So today we're going to look at a few passages of scripture that helps us understand what it means to listen to God, how to listen to God, and then we're going to look at what to do with it. So a couple of things that I want you to understand through this lesson that you can kind of take away is that God doesn't speak in just one way and that listening should lead to action. That's the two things that I really want you to take away from this, that God doesn't speak in just one way, and that listening should lead to action. But I want to open with these two questions, all right? So what do you think, or why do you think, it is hard to hear God sometimes? Ponder that in your heart and in your head just for a moment. Why do you think it is hard to sometimes hear God? What is it about our lives that makes it hard for us to hear God? And the other question is, do you truly spend time trying to hear what God is saying to you? So those two questions obviously kind of coincide with one another. Sometimes it's hard to hear God because we're really not trying to hear Him. But oftentimes there's so much stuff in our life that's going on that we can't, we can't make a pathway clear enough to, to hear Him. It's like if our parents are talking to us and yet there's uh, games going on and music going on and, and just siblings that are fighting behind us. It's hard for us to hear because of all the distractions around us. But as to where our parents normally have a few different ways of communicating, if they're told us to do something a couple of times, after they stand up out of their chair and they're coming towards us, that's a new way of communi communicating that we better get to doing what they've asked us to do. And that's the same with God. He doesn't have just one way of speaking to us. He's got multiple ways of speaking to us. John 10, verse 24 through 30 says this, So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long would you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. That is strong right there. Jesus is saying, look, guys, you're asking me this. You're wanting me to tell you plainly that I am the Christ. But I've already shown you that. I've already shown you that I'm the Christ. I spoke to you through the miracles, through the things that I've done in my Father's name. I've showed you and told you that I come from my Father who is in heaven, who is in control of all things. And yet, even, even though you want me to plainly say, I am the Christ, if I was just to say those words, you still wouldn't believe me. If my miracles and me doing things in my Father's names weren't enough to, to, to make you believe, me just saying the words, you're not going to listen to that either. And Jesus is showing that there's multiple ways to speak by example, through words, through all things. But listening, taking the time to listen, is the key factor in, into what has to happen here. So we must take time to listen to God when He's speaking to us. We have to realize that there's not just that one way. It, when I think about taking time to listen to God, you probably know your best friend pretty well. You probably know everything they love. You probably know everything they hate. You probably can even help them finish their own sentences. But you know them so well because you've invested a ton of time into that relationship. You've made space in your schedule. You've made space in your life for that person. And you know them well. 
But I have to ask, have you done that same thing for God? Have you invested time with God? Have you invested to create space in your schedule, in your life for God? It's tough to hear from God when we're constantly distracted by a billion things that is around us. I want to give you a little challenge. I want you to, to maybe try to put your phone down for a day. Or maybe even take a fast from technology for like three days. And then see if God speaks or leads you in that space of opportunity that you have created. And I want you to be sensitive to His Word. While you're taking that fast or while you've put your phone down for that day, we have to fill that time with something else. If we're going to fast from technology, we need to fill that time with prayer and scripture reading. And you've got to be sensitive to his words. That means giving a response or a change to, to something. Be sensitive to his word. The sheep, that's us. Know the shepherd. And that's how hearing from God starts. We get to know Him. Just like you got to know your friend, right? You get to know God through reading His Word. The Bible is full of God's words. They tell about what He cares about, what He's done, what His mission is. Reading God's Word helps us know Him better. And when we get to know the shepherd, we can recognize His voice in many other places. And God has spoken to people over 2,000 years throughout the Bible. It's not about how much time you spend reading the Bible, but the quality of time that you put into reading the Bible. God wants to direct us in every way possible, and the gift of Scripture is a great place to start listening to God's will for your life. And I want you to understand that God never contradicts Himself. He doesn't change up his message, and the Bible is repeatedly clear about that. It tells us about it in Hebrews 13, 8, in John, uh, James 1, 17, and also Psalms 33, 11. So we know that when a message contradicts what God's Word says, that we ought to question the message that, we, that we're hearing. So we know if we're hearing from God or not. Sometimes emotions or culture, or even well-meaning people can tell us something that sounds like it's from God, but it's not. So we must be in God's Word and be sensitive to His Word so that we know the shepherd's voice when He speaks to us. And when He speaks to us, we should listen, and that, listen, that listening should lead to action. James 1, 22-25 says this, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and per perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts... He will be blessed in his doing. Listening is a lot more than just hearing. Many people have heard God's voice and have done nothing in response to what they've heard. James describes those type of people as a man who sees himself in a mirror, looks at his face intently in a mirror, and yet forgets what he even looks like. If you're really listening to what God is saying to you, it should make a difference in your life. It should have some sort of change or impact and there should be a response from you to what you're hearing from God. It should call you to action. So the next time you think that God is speaking to you, don't just hear from God. Listen to Him closely and act on what He is telling you. And know that God can speak to you when you least expect it. Maybe you've woken up in the middle of night and you've thought about a person that, that, that really just needs your prayers or you thought about somebody that was hurting. Maybe you just woke up and thought about somebody and didn't know what to do about it. Or maybe you've gone to bed at night and you lay there and you're kind of convicted, feeling guilty and convicted over something you've done earlier in the day. If God wants to speak to you, He doesn't always do it in the 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. school schedule that fits your life. 
You have to pay attention to moments that catch you off guard, like when you're laying there in bed and you feel convicted over something you've done that day, or like when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're thinking about a person that, that just needs your prayers that you need to pray for. If you feel like God is asking you to do something drastic, pray about it. Discern if it's from Him or not, and then move on that. Don't worry if it looks like you're going to be crazy doing that. Remember that Noah heard God tell him to build a very, very big boat in a very, very dry place. And everybody thought Noah was crazy. That is until it started to rain. I want you to listen to this story. There was a woman who was new to a particular town. And she went to this park and she sat on a bench and she prayed for guidance on how to meet the needs of her new neighborhood. One neighbor came and joined her which started a conversation about God and faith. She ended up leading that new neighbor to Christ only three days after that initial park bench prayer. When God is ready to move, we need to be ready to listen. We have to be on our toes, attentive to God, ready to, to listen, which also means ready to act on what He's telling us to do. So, is God speaking to you now? Take some time to write down any thoughts that you've had recently that you think may have been from God. God could be speaking to you through your heart. He could be speaking to you through a trusted friend, a mentor, uh, maybe even the pages of Scripture through prayer. But do you think God is calling you to do something holy, something hard, maybe something even uncomfortable? And then discern God's voice in those things. Take that list that you just created to a trusted, mature Christ follower. Ask that person whether or not they think each item comes from God. Pray over that list and listen to God's leading on each of those items. And don't get offended if that person thinks that maybe something, an item on that list is not from God. Hear them out. Listen carefully as to why they think that may be. But take action. God speaks because He wants us to act. He wants us to do things that glorify Him. Don't be afraid to do big things when He calls you to do big things. He will empower you by the Holy Spirit to accomplish the things that He calls you to do. And lastly, I want you to multiply this. Disciples who grow disciples Tune in to God's voice. They follow it, but they share it with others. When God is speaking to you and you're following his word, life can be amazing. It will probably require risk, adventure, and maybe some discomfort. But I promise you, it's all worth it. That kind of life is something that should be shared with other people. People that can see Christ in your life. In your, and, and maybe be changed themselves because of the way you live and speak life into their lives. Do your friends know what God is telling you? Do you know what God is telling your friends? Or what about your family? Tell somebody this week what God is doing in your life. That way they know that you're hearing from God, that you're listening to God, and that you're acting on behalf of God. Guys, I pray as we come to a close on this lesson that, that listening to God is a little bit more clear than it was maybe before this lesson. But know that listening is so important. In Matthew 4.19, Jesus says, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That first part, follow me, also includes listening. You can't follow somebody if you're not listening to their directions. So let's be disciples that make disciples, starting off by listening to God himself. Guys, I pray that as we have finished that lesson on listening, that you would take time out of your week this week to do a devotion with your family. In the parents' emails, all the, all the emails that I have on file, I have sent a link out for a, a family devotion that follows along with what we just talked about. So I pray that you guys would work together, that we would all become better listeners of God. Would you pray with me? Father God, thank you for us being able to hear you. Thank you for being a personal God so we could get to know you as you know us, Father God. 
Lord, I pray as we get to know you, we would be able to recognize your voice. We would be able to hear you clearly, Father God. And from that, we could act more boldly. We would have confidence in the hope that we, we have in salvation. We would have confidence in the Holy Spirit that empowers us to do things. And Father, that we wouldn't have to be scared little Christians, that we are bold, Bible-carrying, faith-based, Jesus-believing Christians, God, disciples of Jesus Christ. Would you help us make other disciples? Would you help us hear you and listen to you, Father God, that we would, we might inspire somebody else to have the hope of Jesus Christ, that you would move in their lives, Father God. Lord, I'm thankful for everything you've, you've done, everything you're doing here, and I pray that you would continue. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.